Smile 2 is the newest horror film to hit theaters. It will leave a smile on your face, but not necessarily in a good way. This is, of course, a sequel to Smile, which released in 2022 and was a financial success. The movie was made for $17 million and grossed over $217 worldwide. This film was made for $28 million and on opening weekend has made $46 million worldwide. So I'd say it's on the right track. We'll see if this has the same sort of horror legs that the first film had. The first this film was written and directed by Parker Finn, and this movie is once again written and directed by Parker Finn. So what is this successful box office horror franchise all about? Well, in the first film, you followed around a woman who had witnessed someone take their own life. But right before they had taken their own life, they had a huge smile on their face. And what was happening was that that person was infected by some sort of demon and was passing on the curse to the girl who witnessed that. And so throughout the events of the first film, this girl who had witnessed that person take their own life is now going through the film and seeing people smile at her and that is actually the smile demon in other people and so with very few clues as to what was going on she was now trying to navigate this terrifying world and while most people in that first film thought she was going crazy there was one police officer that believed her played by Kyle Gallner and of course at the end of the first movie you saw the curse get passed on to him and that's where it ended so what was going to happen well that is where this movie starts and one of the things I like the most about it, I'll get to my positives in a minute, but that's where this movie starts. It starts with Kyle Gallner in a house trying to pass along the smile demon to a very bad person. One thing leads to another, he passes it along to the wrong person, and then that person who shouldn't have gotten the curse passes it along to the star of this film played by Naomi Scott, and her name in this movie is Sky Riley. And Sky Riley is a pop singer, very, very popular, but has gone through some crazy trauma in the past. And that might be one of the reasons the Smile Demon set all of this in motion, because one of the very few things we know about the Smile Demon is that it likes to feed off past trauma, and she has a lot of it. And so now this girl is trying to navigate being a pop singer, trying to impress her mother, trying to impress her fans, trying to stay away from drugs, but now has this Smile Demon after her, so she's trying to navigate this nightmare-fueled life she now lives. That's the best setup that I can give you for this film, if that sounds like an interesting concept you can go check this movie out it is playing in theaters now and we are in the spooky month so it's fun to just go see a horror movie during October now let's get into my positives and some of my negatives my first positive for this movie is that there are some scenes that will keep you on the edge of your seat and they are really well done the first one comes right off the bat with Kyle Gallner when he is in that house trying to turn over that curse to someone else I thought the way they built that scene and of course coming off the events of the first film it's fresh in your mind so you see Kyle Gallner you're like all right here we go and you're sort of edge your seat what's going to happen and I think the way they filmed that scene all the way to the bloody finish I thought all of that was done really well a great scene to kick off the movie there's another scene in this movie I will just call the hallway scene I'm not going to spoil anything but there's a hallway scene if you've seen it you know what I'm talking about one of the creepiest moments in the entire movie because in that moment you weren't sure if it was a smile demon or something else it very well could have been either Either of them and I think in a horror film built around supernatural elements to throw in a non-supernatural element in that moment was just so effective for me kept me on the edge of my seat loved everything about that scene and the final scene that kept me on the edge of my seat was a scene in a car and in this car you have the pop singer Sky Riley but she's being driven by her boyfriend and her boyfriend is played by Ray Nicholson that's right Jack Nicholson's son I've never seen him in anything before as soon as I saw him in this movie I was like wow he looks identical to his dad but in this scene you have two people that are arguing they are high on drugs and they're going over 100 miles an hour and the way the camera work is done in that car is so edge of your seat I love what they do with it they're fighting with each other they're being erratic with each other and you're also seeing this car zoom down the highway 100 miles an hour flying past other cars so every once in a while you'll see through their windshield and you're like oh that's really dangerous but then you'll cut to the car where it's the two of them screaming at each other and so it's this high tension situation that ends 
beautifully for a horror film. Now my next positive I have to tread very carefully because I'm not trying to spoil anything in this review, but I think that there's a really clever way that this movie manipulates not just Sky Riley throughout the film, but it manipulates the viewer throughout the film. So again, treading lightly here, one of the things that this smile demon can do is that it can manipulate time and it can manipulate a person's sense of what's really going on. It can fake out things, and you saw that a lot in the first movie. And one of the clever things that this movie does is that it not only tricks her, but it tricks you, the audience. And that doesn't always work, and it doesn't always work in this film, but when it does work, I thought it's done really well. Because in a horror film, when you're watching someone be manipulated, that can add to the tension of the viewer. You're like, oh no, don't go down that hallway, or don't do this, because you know it's not real. But this movie does a good job sort of keeping all of that information from the viewer, so you're not sure what's real and what's not, until things are revealed towards the end. And I feel like I'm headed towards spoiler territory, so I'm just going to leave it at that. I think the movie does a clever job at keeping the real truth from what's going on in this movie from the viewer. And my final positive also hinges on my first negative, so we are going to start with the positive side of the jump scares. I think there are some really well-placed jump scares in this movie. One in particular where you are expecting a jump scare from one direction and you get it from somewhere else. If you've seen the movie, I think you know what I'm talking about. She's looking at a phone at the time, and yeah, you get a jump scare from somewhere you didn't expect, and I thought that was really well done. And so there are a few well-placed jump scares throughout this whole movie. There's a scene in a hallway we talked about earlier. There's also a scene with a water bottle, and there's just moments in this movie where the jump scares are warranted and they're done really well. However, that leads me to my first negative, and that there are a lot of jump scares in this movie that are just big, loud noises and they don't really lead anywhere. They're just there to scare the audience, and then they don't lead anywhere. And so that's my first negative of this film, is that there are too many jump scares. Yes, my last positive is that there's a few well-placed jump scares, and those are warranted, but the movie overall has way too many. There is just jump scare after jump scare after jump scare after jump scare, and maybe that's effective the first time around, but I can't imagine in the future really enjoying that. I think that's always been an issue I've had with the Insidious franchise, at least the first two films, because it was just jump scare after jump scare, after loud noise after loud noise and when you try to re-watch those on repeat viewings those just kind of get irritating and I can see this movie down the road on a repeat viewing making me kind of irritated because those jump scares are just every five minutes to the point where it's just irritating. My next negative actually has to do with the opening scene. I thought the opening scene was great for tension. I thought it was a great bridge between the first and second film but there's a very significant depth that happens in that opening scene that seems to break the rules of the entire franchise and I won't go into more detail now now because that would be very spoilery and I don't want to get into that but there's a character that dies if you've seen the movie the way this character dies seems to contradict how the curse can be passed from person to person at least in my opinion based on what I saw the first time around now knowing what I've seen if I watch this movie again maybe I'll be able to notice little things but as of right now that that death seemed to contradict how the curse is able to be passed from person to person and I don't know how to process that so I'm gonna put it in the next negatives for now. Maybe towards the end of the month when I rank all the movies of the month, I'll go into more detail then because it will have been out for a couple of weeks, but for now I'll leave it at that. My next negative is that this film doesn't really further the story of the Smile universe at all. And what I mean by that is that in the first film it's established there's a Smile demon, it'll latch onto you once you see someone take their own life, then it'll come after you, make you really crazy until you take your own life in front of someone else and pass along the curse. And that is what the first movie does. And honestly it was a good setup for a first film because we'd never been introduced to this Smile universe ever before. But when you get into the second film, you want a little bit more either about the demon, about the people in the universe, how to beat the demon, something along those lines. But in my opinion, this movie just does a wash, rinse, repeat of the entire first film. You have a whole new cast and crew in this film. You have their backstories to get into. You have their lives to get into. So maybe it furthers the story in that sense. But as far as what is this Smile demon and what's going on with it, well, they're all figuring this out for the first time so you the viewer have to go along with this for the first time yet again and that didn't work for me because I had already established what was going on in this universe in the first film and now we get into the second film and it's like okay well they have to learn the rules again so we're just going to go through all of this again and again it just kind of feels like wash rinse repeat from the first movie and so by the end of this movie they do something that's a little different and I appreciated that 
to a point because it was like, all right, well, at least that's wildly different. And if they do a third film, then I think they'll have to address the end of the second film. And I think that is the most furthering we've gotten of this universe. So maybe the director's holding back. He wrote the first movie. He directed it. He wrote the second movie. He directed it. He had his vision for those. He did a bit of a wash, rinse, repeat on the second story, but maybe that was to lead to the big thing that happens at the end of this film so that in the third movie he can explore it because now it's a bigger deal than just one person seeing the smile demon. And so maybe that is what it ultimately this will lead to. And I'm not mad at that, but part of me is holding back and saying, wait a minute, hold on. I just watched the first movie where they went through all the established rules of the franchise. And then the second movie reset that up because it was a whole new cast and crew that had no idea what was going on. So it's a negative for now. But if they make a third film and they explore all of the things about this universe and they sort of have to dive deeper because of what happened at the end of this film, then maybe this eventually will turn into a positive. I can say, okay, you could do the wash, rinse, repeat on me once, but I don't want to see it a third time. So for now, it's a negative because I don't think think it furthered the plot of the universe enough. Overall, I had a good enough time with this movie. It wasn't my favorite horror film of 2024 by far, but it wasn't the worst either. I'm somewhere in the middle of this film because I do see how people are going to enjoy it. If you liked the first movie, you're getting a bit of a wash, rinse, repeat, but if that's what you liked about the first movie, you're going to like that about the second. If you're looking for world building or furthering the story at all, this movie will come in a little disappointing to you like it did for me, but I would still recommend it to horror fans. I would still say go out and see this movie in theaters. It is a Paramount release, so it will be on Paramount+. Plus. If you're not really excited to see the second film, then maybe wait for this one on Paramount+. Plus. I'm sure it'll be there in a couple of weeks. But guys, those are just my opinions because that's my review for Smile 2. Have you had a chance to see this film? If you have, let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know where you agree or disagree. Maybe you were a little disappointed by me. Maybe it worked for you on every level. I'd love to know your opinions as well, so let me know down below. And finally, guys, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button because it helps the video it helps the channel and it helps me right here thanks for watching i'll see you next time All right, guys, we got to the end of my Smile 2 review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you're having a fun, spooky month. It is October. We're getting closer and closer to Halloween. I've been trying to watch a lot of horror films this month, and I hope you guys have enjoyed the content that's been coming out of my channel. If you want to check out any of the other content on my channel, well, I've got all of my horror movie reviews right there, and I've got all of my 2024 movie reviews right there.